everyone. Welcome to the show today. Today we have someone, uh, first of all, Lindsay is unfortunately sick, but we'll be back for the next episode. You know, kids, viruses, we all been there and done that. So today we have our guest is Mark Yu, who on YouTube is called Asin Funk Comics. Is that uh, Asian Funk Comics? Asian Funk Comics. Yeah. My, my apologies. <laughs> Close uh, enough. This is kind of cool because I was on your podcast years ago, gosh, two or three years ago, and now you're on our podcast. So this is pretty awesome. Welcome to the show, Mark. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. You are a collector of all kinds of things. So we're going to start, of course, with how you got into sketch cards, how you found sketch cards and all that. And then and then maybe you can tell us what else you collect, how sketch cards have kind of um, helped you in your collecting world, if it has at all, or if it has uh, completely demolished you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, uh, so I would... I probably have to thank uh, a fellow artist, uh, Dave Palumbo, um, for getting me into sketch cards. He kind of did it uh, inadvertently and not really on purpose. Um, so I used to collect Marvel trading cards. Uh, I started with the 1992 Marvel Masterpiece cards with Joe Jusco. That was kind of my starting point. And then uh, once I realized that there were other cards before that, and then pretty much every year there was going to be a new set released. I was, I was hooked. Um, you know, that led into comic books uh, and other collectibles. Um, but I pretty much collected trading Marvel trading cards uh, pretty much for most of the nineties. And then I kind of took a break from collecting everything uh, for basically from 2000 to basically 2020, 2020. So for 20 years, I, didn't collect anything. I didn't collect trading cards. I didn't collect comic books. I was just done. Um, and then, you know, uh, the pandemic happened. And then, you know, of course, you start, you know, going through your stuff. And you're like, oh, I really, you know, remember collecting these things. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they've, you know, they've released a, a Marvel masterpiece recently. And in 2020, uh, they did they announced that they were releasing one um by an artist named dave palumbo and i was like never heard of him before um turns out he's related to julie bell who also did a marvel masterpiece um her and her husband uh were involved in, in some marvel masterpieces and i was familiar with them and i was like that's interesting um and it was being uh, released by Upper Deck, which is a, a company I only associated with sports. Uh, I didn't realize that they had acquired the rights to uh, uh, distributing Marvel cards. And so, because I was only around, I, I only collected Marvel cards when like Skybox was mm -hmm. the main distributor. Um, and, uh, and I wasn't even around for Rittenhouse. I was not even, I wasn't even collecting at the time when they had it. So I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. Uh, Upper Decks, you know, releasing Marvel cards. That's kind of interesting. And then, uh, yeah, it turns out they were releasing a, the 2020 Marvel Masterpieces. I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I've got some extra income because I haven't been going out. Just, you know, been sitting around in the house. I was like, yeah, I could, you know, I'll, I'll look into this. Um, you know, I was, how expensive going out is, eh? Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're surprised how much money you save by not going out. Um, but then to my shock, uh, I didn't realize how much, uh, uh, Marvel trading cards were, um, of course I, you know, I hadn't been collecting for the last 20 years, so I didn't see the price increase in any of that. So I was just like, you know, for one box, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, I never spent that much money on trading cards ever. Um, and so I somehow got a hold of one box and then um, in that box, I, I'm mainly a base collector, right? I just collect the, you know, I collect all the cards. Uh, didn't really care about any of the special, you know, holograms or whatever. But in that box that I bought was a sketch card. And I was kind of like, what is this? You know, this is kind of interesting. Um, 
And I thought it was, I thought it was an accident. I thought they'd messed up actually. Uh, and I was, and I actually, I did a live unboxing with Dave Palumbo on my channel, which is really cool. Um, and uh, of his cards. And so you know, I told him like, oh, I, I found this card, but it's kind of like dented in the corner and it was kind of done by like an artist I'd never heard of, you know, I'd never seen anything like that before. And then he, he had said, uh, he suggested, oh, you can um, contact Upper Deck and tell them you have received a damaged card and they will send you a new one. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And so I did that and Upper Deck sent me back a different card um, by uh, an artist I had heard of, um, Al Milgram. He, so he is a comic book artist and I was like, oh, comic book artists also do sketch cards or have, you know, have done them. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. And so then I started doing more research. Um, I wonder what other artists, what other comic book artists had done sketch cards. And so it turned out a lot. Right. And oh, ones I've heard of. This was, this was all um, a discovery for you in the, the early 2020s, like just. Mm -hmm. you know? yep. Really? Yep. Well, yep. this is fascinating to hear your side of it. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I, yeah. So just some back. I'm a new sketch card collector. I've only been collecting for a, a couple of years. Um, and so, yeah. The, and, you know, once I discovered, so, you know, I never. I would never searched for sketch cards on eBay or any website before. I, you know, didn't, I, I never saw them anywhere. You know, hobby shops don't sell them really, uh, let alone sell trading cards in general anymore. So like you never see sketch cards in a, in a card shop. Um, but once I searched sketch card in eBay, oh my gosh, that was the end. That was it. I was like, there's, there's so many. And it's funny because, you know, you, you realize like some of them are really valuable, right? Or are priced really high and some are just kind of like 10 bucks, whatever. And so I was like, oh man, this is, this is kind of fun. And I don't know what happened, but like the, the, the collector in me, like just turned on and I was like, I'm going to collect all the, the super cheap cards, you know, all the ones that were done like in 2008 um, in pencil, you know, like the ones that are just like literally like a line line drawing. And oh, that's you know, awesome! Went... That's super. I love that. Did so yeah. you actually went through with that? You actually got a whole collection of. Uh... I mean, you know, I, I bought as many as I could. So I, yeah, I had like, you know, I started with like, you know, ten, and then I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll I'll just collect a certain character. So then, you know, I started going after that character, um, and then you know, then you start seeing like, wow, the the variety of of styles of these sketch cards you know are, it's just like unlimited right like there's no there's no restriction on the on the medium you can you can uh draw these sketch cards um and actually it was uh one of your cards that was the where i discovered like wow these can be like little pieces of art because <laughs> there there's not that many artists that use like you know like oil right like Usually it's just, it's like there are a few. You know, pencil pen. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I don't, I, I had never seen any um, that I liked and, or that I like, you know, was interested in. And I was like, wow, um, th these, these sketch cards can be art. And so that was like, kind of like the first time where I was like, not just collecting cards, but I was like collecting pieces of art. Um, and like the whole idea that everything is like one of one. Right. Like it really is one of one because there there isn't like gonna be another one like it. Um mm. like the artist can draw the same character over and over, but it's all gonna be different. Yeah. So yeah. um yeah, and then that was it. So like from the last two years, I went from full steam on collecting these sketch cards. I, you know, um so has your focus changed at all? Is it has it stayed like um are you are you going after particular styles media characters as you were mentioning or are you still kind of sampling a little bit of everything to see what you like uh so i'm i'm now you know i i guess the progression right is that you you just collect everything that you see and then you slowly focus and so now um i i i almost exclusively only collect um these um uh, what is it? It's like from 2018 Marvel premiere. It's these sketch cards that have a 
um, a fake picture frame border. Okay. Um, uh, they're actually from like a, a, a subset called like the Hellfire Club portrait. So it's like a, a sketch card with a fake frame around it. It's kind of like raised. Um, I haven't seen only... it. Sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is pretty fun. Let me, um, should, I should have had one with me. But um, yeah, so they're, they're, they only chose like 15 characters and then each character has 30 sketches each. So it's pretty, you know, it's pretty limited and pretty niche. But like right now, for some reason, that is like the one, like if I see that on eBay or something, I'm just going to like go for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also go after um, certain characters who aren't that popular. So that kind of helps like, you know, budget wise, it's, I'm not going crazy. Um, so, not but yeah. That, not only that for your budget, when you're going after characters that are maybe a little less popular, things that come around tend to go around, you know, and they become popular again, eventually. Yeah. Anyway, yep. and, and, you know, who knows? and you happen to, and that makes a, a collection that you have of yours that's exclusive and a little different from maybe other people other people's character uh, collections. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, um, you know, you realize, well, I didn't even know there was a whole community, right? A whole community of collectors. Um, well, and there are many communities of collectors. <laughs> that, right, right. But, I, you know, it's like when you're not a part of it, you don't think it exists until you are like, oh, you collect this too? And then, you know, so through like the, the Facebook groups, I realized that there are other collectors who do collect that the specific character so it's nice to be like oh we're, we're it's always the two or three of us going after the same card which is kind of funny um but yeah yeah right now um you know i i've become more uh focused in my collecting but yeah before it was i but was just like found, before you found sketch cards was it comic books you were collecting yeah yeah so like um when i collected trading cards back in the 90s you know, that, that was basically a, a segue into comics. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, I took a break and I came back and, uh, I started collecting comics again. Um, and yeah, th that's where I you know, kind of got into, uh, encapsulating comics. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, CGC labels on comic books where they're kind of encased in plastic and they have a grade. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of a thing that I got into. So, and then, um, and then, you know, that just kind of, it's funny how I started with cards. I went into comics, stayed in comics, and then kind of went back into cards. You'll, have it, you'll probably eventually go back to comics or something. I know. It's just like a, it's like a vicious circle. What do you think of the comic book world, actually? Like comics have been around since, what, the 30s or the 40s? And it kind of comes and goes and comes mm -hmm. and goes. What do you think? Do you think there's a future for comic books? I know that's a little bit off the topic of sketch cards, but it's all visual. Do you think there's a, a future? I look at comic books and it's like, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think um, uh, the movies have definitely helped. Um, I feel like if you were reading comics before the movie started becoming popular, you probably are still reading comics. Um, I think uh, the movies brought in a lot of fans uh but also brought in a lot of um uh i guess like investors like okay. so people who looked at comics and then said this could be an investment um so more and more of those types of uh people um but you know i again i i collected comics because i liked either the, the writer or the artist or the character I didn't really think of it as like an investment piece. I never kept comics thinking it would be worth something. I kept them because I liked reading them. Um, the best reason. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that I, I, I mean, as an adult, I do have comics that I know are worth something. Uh, but um, I don't, I, I still don't go after comics thinking that this is going to be worth something in the future. I don't, I'm not that kind of collector. Um you know, I still collect comics to read them, which is, you know, good uh, for my wallet. Um, but yeah, no, I think there's definitely, and again, like like every everything that was popular is now popular will probably be not popular again. Um, but it I think feels like it feels like maybe the the public is getting a bit of um, superhero fatigue with all the movies. Oh that uh, yeah, stuff. 
Absolutely. Um, I, because of Netflix and things like that, I came across um, televised versions of comics that I didn't know exist existed. I have read comics in the past, but I really very honestly gave a lot of it up. It just, the you know, the, the art is amazing, but I wasn't interested in the stories. And then I came across things like um, The Preacher, um, mm-hmm. What was the, uh, I forget the name of the other one, but anyway, all these th- that explore completely different ideas and, and it's like, whoa, that's something that I would totally go into if I knew it was around to, to get. Would, have you read any of the, of the maybe more underground comics or have you been reading mostly one different genre? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I primarily read Marvel, uh, some DC, uh, some Image um and uh so there's a, there's other smaller publishers like boom um mm-hmm. who have like rights to movie licenses like uh big trouble in little china um which is this or like wwe or uh, wrestling so it's kind of fun to read um uh titles that like marvel would never or dc would ever make so that's always nice i i tend to uh i definitely would not have read smaller publishers before but now i do just because you're right there is like an oversaturation um you know it, it, before if you liked spider-man the only place you would find him were in comic books or cards yeah. right mm-hmm. um but now it's like you can find spider-man on any medium uh so it's like you have options um so yeah i i think um i i definitely like to read a variety of things um That's and you know too. i yeah, and it's you know it's like once you've read enough Spider-Man stories, you feel like you've read them all. So I tend to wait. I tend to not read all the stories that come out. I kind of like wait. You know, something bubbles up, and people are like, "This was amazing!" So of course you read that one. Um, oh, like binge binge watch before service. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and that's the the other thing is uh, my habits. My reading habits have changed. I used to you know you would buy one issue every month and read it that way. But now as an adult, I have like almost zero patience. Um, And so I I wait until like, for example, Saga, I don't know if you've heard of Saga. Yes, yes. Um, They're notoriously slow in releasing their issues. And so I like to wait until um, they release like a, they call it compendium, which is like, you know, like 20 issues in a row. So and it's like a hardbound book. I wait until they release that, and I just read. I just blast through it. I I could not, I could not read one issue a month. I couldn't do it. Funny how times have changed, and it has kind of affected uh, many parts of our lives. The way we've become used to having what we want when we want. Mm-hmm, if we can't mm-hmm. have what we want when we want, we've become a little Every- bit patient. Yeah, <laughs> like that, and. Then, and then you wait until it all comes out. I've I've done the same thing myself. I hate waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And you know, the same thing can be said about um, uh, trading cards, right? This like I know there's a lot of people who are like they're always excited for the next release of yeah. uh, whatever Upper Deck's going to do. And it's like you know, in reality, it, it takes like a year, you know, for the next thing to come out. And um, thank goodness I'm not like you know, itching for the next one. I'm always, I'm a little slower to what is, um, what is popular. And I, you know, I'm a fan of like going back and collecting older, older sets or older, um, older releases. Um, just because it's, it's less competition because, you know, not everyone's after the, oh, everyone's always after the new, the new yeah. shiny stuff. And so I'm more like, oh, let's go look at 2008. There's always like something from 2008. Uh, like yeah, you know, uh, what is it? Um, the complete yeah. Avengers or something like. Almost no one collects those, which is nice because then I get to really like take my time. Um, so yeah, and plus the <laughs> sketches there, are, some of the sketches from th- that time are like funnier. Um, I actually enjoyed the interview you did with uh Mark Spears, mm-hmm. um, and he was talking about how like they always wanted him to draw like really realistic characters, but then he he was like, but wait, this artist is drawing like goofy goofy poses i want to do that and i was like that's so funny because i i actually like his goofier stuff they're just so hilarious um you know like he he makes he uh i think it's um like he he 
the way he renders or the way he draws is just so funny. It's like, I don't know. I like seeing classic Marvel characters doing silly stuff. That's also one of my, one of the things I collect. It's so nice to see a variety of stuff. Like when we work on sets, you know, very often we must draw realistically, like Mark was saying, you know, they want you to do a particular style for him, yeah. for, his, for us, for cards, something. So we don't really have the freedom to decide, well, you mm -hmm. know, this style or that style or the way we want to do it. We have to do what they want to do, which yeah. is kind of, you know, well, it's very limiting to, to be very honest. It's so fun to see these sets come out and you have all kinds of styles interpreting that character. I think it's just really cool. You know, like if you really got off on one character, you could have 20 different or 50 different sketch cards in completely different styles for that yep. one character. I would totally get off on that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's funny you mentioned that. Um, like there's this thing that I think I'm I'm secretly starting to do where um so I'm a I'm a fan of uh so I'm a fan of character Marvel characters that can shape shift mm -hmm. um or characters that can absorb other powers. So like Rogue would be one of them where um so and there's I'm on this this kick right now where Rogue absorbs someone's powers who is who can shoot out red beams and so she's shooting out red beams and so what i would do is i would commission different artists with that with that request like can you draw this character doing this and so now i have like a, a set of of cards from different artists but doing the same character in different styles and so that's kind of like a nice um kind of thing that i've started and i, I you know i eventually would like to get one of from you um but that's right but that yeah. makes that, that that's a really awesome thing you've made your own curated set that you could never yeah. buy from the company that's you really decided yeah. i want a set of cards like that and that's yeah. what you end up and you you've yeah. got some original and no one else has and that's kind of something that um that like sketch card art has like that has it's kind of something that sketch card does it doesn't that other hobbies don't let, really let you do like you have so much I guess like input sometimes into the the sketches, especially if it's like an AP. Like yeah. you have so much creative. You ha you're in most cases you have a lot of creative involvement um, in 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 these cards, and so that's like something you don't really get. You don't get it really get that kind of ownership in other hobbies. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you can do that in in comic books too, where you know there are blank comic books where you can have artists do stuff on that. But I think with like with I think like sketch cards is like it's more intimate it's so tiny um it's also like, doable like you could yeah commission people to do i don't know uh, 50 different versions sure, sure. of rogue in a, in a in a eight by ten format but that would take you a lot longer because it's a lot longer to complete yeah, that's bigger. absolutely the whole thing with sketch cards is that it it can only take that much time because it's it, so it, it, yeah exactly it's for everybody pretty much exactly i will say though um i have commissioned some sketch cards from certain artists won't name them but it has taken <laughs> months to get back yeah. um for uh for a variety of reasons we but, won't yeah. That road, but yeah that's no 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 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just just from a from a collector standpoint yeah it, it can it's take been, time <laughs> if it has been months for you you're pretty lucky Oh, I oh I know. I've read stories of, of it taking years, and I was like, I would, I could never, I could never wait that long. No, no. So, um, so how has what? Do you think you're going to keep collecting sketch cards, or do you think it's going to evolve in something else, or are you just open to see what happens? I think, I think, um, I think right now I would consider myself a a part time sketch card collector. I think I I always look. I'm always browsing. You know, I'm always. I'm always keeping an eye out on certain places. I'm always, you know, listening. But I think for the most part, I'm I'm just enjoying others collecting right now. Uh, I'm more of like a uh, a viewer than a participant. Um, You're a tourist. Yes, exactly, exactly. Just I'm just here to take photos. Uh, and you know, I think the the other part of the hobby that I I find I think is like my new addiction is like you know interviewing artists like you. Um, that was like the next evolution in my sort of like sketch card collecting was learning more of like finding out more about the the artist and 
some of the creative decisions um, that went into doing that, you know, I think because as, as a creative person myself, I, I'm also fascinated with like the process of sketch card and like even the business, like just the, the things that the artist has, has to deal with is like fascinating to me. I'm not saying it's fun for you necessarily all the time, but it's fascinating uh, to learn about that. And, you know, I've interviewed a few artists um, who, you know, from very different backgrounds, very different levels and experiences. And, you know, it's funny to hear some of the same things, like the common, um, common struggles of, you know, being a sketch card artist. So, um, yeah, you know, which it, is why for most people, it ends up being a temporary part of your career, sadly, because there are a lot of things, again, like you were mentioning that, you know, sketch cards is unique for certain applications, if you like. Yeah. Um, but very limiting for others, you know, so, uh, but yeah, yeah, so actually that brings me to another, well, there are two things I'd like to talk to you about, actually, for one of them, of course, is your YouTube channel, yeah. because as you were mentioning, you're kind of, uh, you know, interviewing other creatives as well. And I also wanted to hear your view of, um, on EPACs and e mm. I kind of would like to know what you think about that because it's something I can't, and even Lindsay herself, we both have a bit of a hard time getting our minds around that. Can you explain it to us? Yeah, yeah. And so it's funny you mentioned that because I actually did a video on that too. Um, so, uh, so EPAC is Upper Decks um, online uh, trading card site, and so um, it's the idea that you can collect cards digitally. Uh, but you can then you can then redeem them for real cards. So Upper Deck has they have the physical cards in a warehouse somewhere. And whenever it is you are ready to say, I want to, I want to, I want those cards, right? Let's say you you bought them on their on their EPAC website. You know, you get you you virtually open a pack or you know, you yeah, okay, you virtually so, open a pack. Okay, first of all. We have to go right back to baby beginnings for people like oh, me okay. who just don't get it. Okay. You, yeah. Yeah. Like, you have Did images lose... on your laptop of cards. And yes. Okay. You, you buy those images. That's right. Yes. Correct. So and anybody can buy those images. And and yeah, anybody. So you know, it's it's interesting because uh, and I, I've mentioned this before. I feel like EPAC is sort of like the it is. I feel like the future of of trading cards. It, it's a long way from from being perfect, but I think it is. It is creating an experience that um, is, is sort of mimicking what it's like to open a pack of cards. I mean, of course, nothing will ever replace that, but um, they've, they've even made it so that, you know, when you purchase a pack, you can purchase a pack of cards, you can open it and it, it opens the pack and reveals the card. So you're getting, you're kind of getting the same, um, same experiences as opening a pack, but virtually. And so then what happens is when you open the, when you open the pack of cards, it then puts it into your collection. So then you can see all the cards you have that you've bought. And then from there, if you want to redeem them for physical cards, you can, which is, I think such a, it's such a crazy idea. And I'm still in awe of how they do that because it, it worked. Um, I bought several packs of uh, the 2020 Marvel masterpiece cards on EPAC. And then I I said I want I want them sent to me. So then you you know you press the buttons you you, you know and then they and then EPAC or Upper Deck mails you those cards those physical cards. So and you can I believe you can you can sell your physical cards, but you have there's another website that does that. So that's the weird thing. So EPAC is a place where you can buy and collect cards and then redeem them for physical cards. But then there's a separate website where you can send your physical cards and then they will sell it virtually. I think I'm of... lost. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm so I don't yeah. get the point. I don't get the point of this. Oh, okay. So um I, I think so from a from a collector standpoint, I feel like the advantages of EPAC are you don't have to worry about storage. Okay. Yeah. You have a collection of cards, but you know, you don't have to worry about them getting wet, damaged, or anything. That's the that's the nice thing. And you, oh, and the other big thing about EPAC that I think is a, a huge thing is you can trade with other collectors on the site. Like you can virtually trade your card. So if you have, let's say, there's someone else who has like a Spider-Man card, and I have a Wolverine card, 
we can both trade those cards. Okay. Which is, I think, a concept like, and that's, I think that was, I think, you know, something that you, you would do in real life. You would trade cards with somebody, right? But to be able to do that virtually, it's like a, that's a, that's a cool thing. Um, I do get that. I understand that you can trade your virtual cards and all that. Yeah. But what I don't understand is what makes your virtual cards unique? Um, so if you're, I mean, if you're just collecting base cards, they're not that special, but you can, again, when you buy these virtual packs, there could be a sketch card in there. So mm -hmm. that would be, that would be the what? unique card. Yeah. You can have a sketch yeah. card in there. You can get a sketch card in there. And so, okay. So yeah. So then what you say is I want that sketch card to be mailed to me. So then they mail you the actual sketch card. Okay. Oh, okay, so it's just digital versions of cards. Yes, exactly. Every card that you have virtually exists. They, like Upper Deck has every card. They yeah. have it. And you just have to tell them to send it to you whenever you're... So it's not like crypto thingy, whatever. It is not. It is not. Okay. They are all based on real cards. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. the crypto yeah. thingy, I still can't understand that. So I, don't, I don't get crypto either. So this don't worry. Is just, okay, I thought this was getting into like crypto stuff. No, no, no. no. So no. It's just digital versions of your cards. Yes. And of course, you're trusting the company that. Um, sure. You know that it's not every. To pack remember, pack. yeah, yeah. It's identical and yeah, but yeah. okay, yeah, okay, I get that. Yeah, that's. Yeah. It, I, I know. It, I'm. I. I uh, was really into it for a little bit. I. I kind of step away from it just because I'm not. Um, you know, I'm not interested so much in the, the current releases, but and pl plus they're kind of pricey. Um, and I, I think, yeah, I mean, some packs are like 20 bucks. I, I, I mean, that might be normal by today's standards, but I never spent that much money on a pack of cards. Um, I mean, of course that's like, that's probably not even that exp It's more expensive now. Um, well, when you have kids, but, 20 bucks a car, a uh, pack is, is expensive, you know, exactly, you exactly. Yep. Yep. I mean, and it's funny, like this hobby, I feel like is not, it is not for how many cards do you get in a pack these days? It varies. Some packs have one card. Some packs have six cards. I know. I know. Okay. Well, that's good for some of us small publishers to, to remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I will say though, I will say because just because, you know, hobby shops aren't very common anymore. And even if there are there is a hobby shop, they might not necessarily sell trading cards. I think EPAC allows everyone to collect cards, um, which is something that didn't exist before. Because That's if you really, live, really, really good point. Because where I live, for instance, um, exactly, there might there is yeah. one store that does sell them, but I'd have to drive about an hour to get to get there. Right. Yeah. So I do understand that point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. I know it, and it's, I wish someone explained this to me. Like, this is literally something I had to like figure out. And I'm like, what is the appeal? And I was anti, I was anti EPAC. I'm like, that sounds like the silliest thing ever. Like, why would you ever want a virtual thing of something that is, you know, that you have in your hand? Like, why would you ever want that? And, and like, over time, I've come to understand, um, you know, sort of the advantages of it, but you know, I don't think it'll ever replace physical cards, but it is an I alternative. But I can see how maybe for certain theme collector collect uh how would I say that for certain themes that you might want to collect, it might actually be appealing, you know, if you want to see if you actually like collecting those particular yeah, yeah. Cards of yeah. whatever it's that thing might be. And then you're like, oh my God, I must have all the real things and blah blah blah. So then you might go into the the actual physical. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there could be some yeah. Some it, it. It's a nice way to sample, you know either a different kind of genre of cards that you might not be interested in. You can try and there's no, there's no like, um, there's no downside, right? Like if you bought a pack of cards and you're like, I don't like these, you don't have to worry about keeping them. You don't have to feel bad about throwing them away. They're just there they're, they're virtually. You never know, you might for whatever reason want them back or something. Exactly. And, okay, exactly. Yeah, I, can get, I can get on board with yeah. that. And then it does, like you just said, it gives people who might not otherwise have the opportunity to actually try collecting. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Bonus points. Yeah. Uh, I can get on that. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's get on to your YouTube channel. How did you start into YouTube and how did that figure yeah. into your 
card collecting do you do you do anything with sketch cards on your youtube channel yeah so um i started my channel um because i enjoyed going to conventions and meeting artists uh and other people in the uh, collecting industry uh but once that wasn't happening like I, I was a fan of going to like you know comic cons and uh trade shows and stuff like that um and then as soon as that stopped i was like you know uh i i wanted to fill that that need and i don't know what it was but i was just um i was like you know i should probably just ask people because if if no one's going to conventions right like what are they doing yeah. and so i was like i wonder if i can ask them and uh the first person i ever interviewed was the the personal tailor of stan lee and so once once he said yes i was like i wonder who else i can ask and so in a way this was also kind of part of like my collector's um mentality where like i wonder who else i can ask and so then i started asking other artists and people in the industry and i think i got really lucky in the timing because you know no one was going out everyone was bored and they were willing to talk to whoever they they needed some social interaction um and i mean i'm not saying everyone i asked said yes that's that definitely not true um you know i think like 90 percent of the people i ask say no um but, but if you don't but, ask you can't they don't even know exactly you only you only need you only need you know that one percent the ten percent um and you know and what happens is once you get one you get another and so on and so forth because people are like oh you talk to this person that's cool and they'll, they'll want to talk to you so um, I think once I got rolling, it was nice to be like, these are the other people I've interviewed. And then they're like, oh, okay, you're all right. You're not just like somebody. <laughs> or you're just like a no, you're not a nobody, but you're sort of a somebody, not not necessarily someone famous or anything. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah. so, um, but yeah, that's kind of how it happened. And then I was like, you know, I should interview the people that create the things that I enjoy collecting, like sketch cards, because those are, once I realized those were like, you know, real people, I was like, and they have like, you know, social media accounts. And I was like, oh, I can, I should, you know, reach out. And, That's you know, um, yeah. And it, it's cool that, like I said, I, I'm, I'm fascinated with um, the process. Uh, I, I, lo I love hearing people's, you know, backgrounds and, you know, uh, how they come to, you know, uh, why they make the creative decisions that they do. I, I love hearing that stuff. Um, and so, yeah. And one, once I started interviewing some of the artists, like yourself, I was like, I'm hooked. I, I, I love talking to people about this. And it kind of feels like that collector's void too. Like, um, and it also gives me like a new appreciation for when I do have a card from an artist I've interviewed it, like the card means more to me. Mm -hmm. Like I, cause I actually, and I, I ask people about the cards that they do. Like, you know, why did you do this this way? Um, and then they, they talk about it. I'm like, that's so interesting. Or they point out something that I never even noticed. Um, and it makes me like appreciate that card even more. So that's always fun when they point out something and you're just like, I did not know that. So. Oh, I'm, uh, I can completely understand when I talk, when, when we talk to collectors or, or other people in this industry and we, we hear about all the things that we had absolutely no idea was part of their job or what have you, or just meeting the people to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like you just said, they really are real people. They actually exist. It's not yeah. just name on a, on a website or something yeah yeah um i mean and it's funny because also like some some artists are very elusive and they're very hard to get in contact with and so that's also part of like the hunt you know and and you know you also want to like sometimes get a um a commission you want to get an ap done by them because you really like their art style um and that's also part of the challenge and you realize like oh this person is like in europe and then they don't necessarily speak your language. And so that's also another, like a barrier you have to like. Challenge overcome. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of, there's a lot of international artists, um, you know, whose language is not, their first language isn't English. So it's like, you know, but for some reason you're able to communicate with them through the yeah. sketch cards, right? Like they know that you're, you like their style. So that, and you know, they are good at this thing. So then there's like, at least that connection, there's no like confusion as to like what, why we're communicating. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's fun meeting different kinds of artists from different places. Are you going to continue your YouTube? Your of course. 
I, you know, I, it's not, it's not a question of if I want to, it's just like when I have the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you know how, how um, demanding YouTube can be and just like, how, you know, how much time it takes to do these interviews and produce the video and market the video. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. You, uh, do you have a, do you have a creative day job? I do. I'm a, I'm a graphic designer. By day. Uh, what, what do you design? May I ask? Uh, oh yeah. So I, I, I work for a nonprofit. So we, uh, and I, I'm on the marketing team. So I create all like the marketing collateral. So brochures, pamphlets, flyers, t-shirts. So I create a lot of like the apparel and a lot of like the, um, uh, marketing materials. Um, so you're yeah, that, that's what I do. Of, you're sort of kind of one of us in a way. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I, I have no illustration skills. Uh, I, I'm more of like, you know, I can, I can, I can lay out, um, you know, I, I can pretty much do, I can lay out a book for you. You can't quite see the book because of my virtual background, but I, I, this is what I would typically be doing. I can, I can do, um, I'm going to turn off my virtual, I'm going to turn off my yeah. virtual background. Give me a second. None. Okay. So I, I book, oh. book layouts, I can do that. That's, that's what I would do. Okay. um yeah that that's that's primarily what i nice my book job. by the way <laughs> oh thank you yeah that's yeah it. one Sorry. of my favorites <laughs> okay. so um, what do you so uh, i'll i'll kind of let you um get on with your daughter in a few minutes i'd like to know what you are uh, planning for your your future of collecting if you uh if you, uh, or if there are any particular victims you're looking to uh, <laughs> to interview or something like that, because I mean, once you've interviewed Stan Lee's Taylor, I mean, where it, do you go? Where do you go? Where from do there? you go from there? Oh, there's there's so many there's so many people. Um, you know, there's a lot of. I feel like I've interviewed enough sketch card artists that I would like to have them back again. You know, I I've interviewed um, Dave Palumbo twice amazing guy uh i've interviewed you once would love to have you back again um i've interviewed ash gonzalez who is like the he's like kind of like the uh current golden child right now of collectors you know his cards are sought out and like you know people really love it and super valuable um and he's one he's one of my favorite favorite artists he's he's, he's great um so you know i I'm, i feel like um and you've you've interviewed a bunch of people that like i've been either like i could not find like, I don't know how you found some of your people. Like, obviously, you, you're you more connected because you're in the, you're actually a fellow artist. But um, there are like a, a lot of the people I'm trying to get on, but I'm not sure I'm going to manage to get them. A lot of people are very shy. And yeah, you know, yeah. I, I There are people that have asked, like, um, uh, uh, so Liddy Lee, uh, she, she's a, um, she does her arts mean like anime style. Like, so it's, you know, very big eyes and big heads. Anyway, she, amazing. I had a, an AP done by her, um, but she basically said, I, I'm super camera shy. So, and I was like, that's fine. Yeah. I even said like, okay, well we can do it without, you can just have your camera off. We can just talk. And she's like, no, I'm super nervous too. So I'm like, that's totally fine. And I get that it, you know, being on camera and talking and sounding interesting is it's very nervous for everyone. The interviews I did years ago, I was terrified. I was terrified. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't even want to watch some of the earlier oh, videos God, I did because they're terrible. They're terrible. You know. So so, so you're gonna keep on going with uh, with your collecting. Do you think you'll keep collecting sketch cards? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's not that I've stopped. I think I've just become more. Um, my tastes have changed, uh, mm -hmm. and you know they're very fine now. Like you know, they're like I said, I only collect like a very niche line of sketch cards which i think a lot of there are a lot of collectors that do that they only collect this one thing Absolutely. um and so you know and it's it's fun every once in a while when you see that that type of card pop up you're like ooh, and you feel the rush again um so yeah i i think i it's not that i've stopped i think i've just become more uh focused, and uh, focused. yeah I yeah and can't collect everything anyway you can't and you know I, i've only been collecting for two years but i you know my collection went from nothing to like a huge box, you know? So, and that's, that's a lot for me. That's like, um, the, the most, 
I, that I feel like sketch collecting sketch cards was like the fastest ramp up I've ever had in collecting. Like I went from nothing to a ton. And then, then you realize you have a ton of sketch cards that you're kind of like, why did I buy this? You mm-hmm. know, like, well, what do I do with it now? And, you know, I'm at that point where like, now I can like trade them with other collectors. Like, Hey, you know, I have these cards. Are you interested? So now I'm, I trade with a lot of collectors instead of buying. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really nice to hear all that. Well, I'm, I'm wishing you all the best for the future of your collecting. Thank you. Thank and you. I can't wait to see what else you're going to come out with on, on your YouTubes. I actually, uh, I, I would, I would encourage people to go take a look at some of the different videos you've put out. You've, been covering a lot of different things you seem to have actually a very healthy curiosity for all <laughs> things uh creative and stuff like that and uh but i'd like to thank you for also explaining the epac thing to me oh yeah absolutely now i get it i get that yeah now, i hope i hope it made sense and it's not for everybody obviously um <laughs> But it's Ooh, there. It's... A lot of perks. I could see a lot of perks for it. I could see a place yeah. for that, actually. I really do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Asian Funk Comics on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and YouTube. And that is, I think, A Z N Funk Comics. Yep. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I would love to have you back on. Hopefully, Lindsay will be able to be on too at the same time next time. Sounds so, good. Thank you again.